basically it felt like we were in a, a small tornado for 12 hours. It sounded like it. It was, it was beating the trees and we could hear the trees snapping. We were in a safe environment, we felt. The hard part was knowing we had friends and, and the, a high percentage of the population of Haiti that was in shacks and homes that, that were not going to withstand the winds that we were, we were feeling and hearing in the home we were in. And um, that, that was a real difficult thing is the question of how things were going with the projects and, and the different areas where we've been working and, and what people, you know, the, any people that we knew and what they were, what they were dealing with. Certainly, uh, food supplies are, are an important early need. Um, I was sharing with someone that when the earthquake took place, it took place where there was a high population, but the breadbasket of Haiti really was not affected a whole lot. So a lot of the things in our area were going to Port-au-Prince to help with, uh, with, with production, agricultural production and supply. Uh, now we've reversed that role. We have the breadbasket, the Kai area, this area out here is a plain with a lot of rice production, a lot of strong agricultural production. That's all been decimated. And uh, Port-au-Prince is looking fine. I, I've, I've heard they really didn't have any impact other than a little wind. But the structure agriculturally is gone. And So any kind of staples that we can get into the country to help with that, any kind of a, you know, a manna pack or a heartland food pack, there's a number of them that uh, Go Serve have brought in in the past and there's some available now. That's really important in the short term. Financial assistance is, is really key. I think there's things that can be purchased, but it's going to be at an escalated price. Inflation's going to really We've been going through about a 100% inflation in Haiti over the last two, three years anyway, 100 to 200%, and now um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to jump dramatically. So, so having the funds to help purchase those things, having the funds to cover the costs of the projects where the, where the, the girls and boys and widows and orphans and abandoned babies are, are going to need sustenance and, and the need to provide for the additional cost of of um, buying food to replace what we either would have raised or what we would have purchased in the past at a reduced price is certainly going to be beneficial. Um, but beyond that is, is helping communities and, and um, every community needs help. There's, it's, it's a scary situation to look at, at the level of need out there and wonder how you know, how there's going to be an opportunity to meet some of that need. We've had some Haitians tell us they think Haiti's finished over this. They just say, Haiti won't recover. Haiti's finished. And I, I'm not in that camp. We, we, we serve a big and mighty God. He loves the people of Haiti. There's a neat work here with Go Serve, with Laborers with Christ and a lot of other organizations that are pulling for this country, and I believe God still has good days in store, but there's a need now to respond, to help in the short term, to get these people to feel like um, this God that we talk about is more than just a God, he's a provider and a protector. And a